So when I moved into this magical place, <laughs> I knew it was only going to be for three months. And I also felt very clearly that this was not where I was really going to establish that it was meant to be temporary, that this was not my ultimate home or my long-term home. It didn't feel like home and at the same time it felt enough like home that I could really make it my home for this time, for these three months. And I really intended to just um, to not only make it my home, but also to have it be a shared space, a shared conscious and sacred space. Um, I had all these visions of making it a uh, a community center, a com conscious connection and community center um, with activities for the community where people could also come by and just really connect with themselves and consciously connect with whomever was present at that moment and was also interested in connecting. <laughs> And also to have um, self-connection and conscious connection activities here, ceremonies, rituals, sessions, um, and have it be an oasis for conscious connection, for self-exploration, and for retreating, and have it also be a retreat center where people could have um, like myself included, <laughs> could have um, individual retreats, um, silent retreats, fasting retreats, <clears throat> creative writing retreats, um, also group retreats to really just get back to yourself and connect with yourself, day retreats, half day retreats. And as soon as I moved in here, I realized that I needed a space for me to retreat, to connect with myself, to really integrate this whole process of even, you know, moving halfway across the globe and of leaving my home behind that already didn't feel like home anymore and starting this journey of finding my home um, and to feel that I had space. Um, and so this house came to re represent spaciousness for me. Um, and at the same time, <laughs> there were so many things going on in the house, so many problems, that one of my main focuses was on these problems. And I... Um, a lot of worries came up for me. What if these problems won't be resolved and I won't be able to share the space? Um, and it really, I, the first month was really a process um, of me becoming acquainted to the space and allowing myself to just be and to have this space and to enjoy this space without having to share it. Um, so focused on sharing and at the same time on, on the fear of not being able to share or not being able to in the way that I really wanted to. Um, that it, it sort of became, um, 
it became, well, it showed me. <laughs> yeah, it showed me how hmm, how actually difficult it was for me to really allow myself to really take up space for myself. So that was the first process that I had here. And then as I already mentioned, I, I, um, <laughs> I also really wanted to share. I wanted to share my gifts and talents. But also that I felt this urgency in that. And there was um, associated with it, there was a, a need, a need to share, as well as a need to generate an income and to sort of value my own gifts and talents to, it was almost like I had to prove myself to myself in a way that I could share my gifts and talents and sort of make a living out of that or at least um, I was so longing to be in a state of overflow to share really from just that it comes naturally that it didn't really come that naturally <laughs> because I was longing for it. <clears throat> and so really in that longing, I was mm, still sort of attached to mm, and in a state of, of not allowing things to flow out of me naturally, um, but wanting them to. And so really in a, like this deep, deep desire to know and really experience um, my own talents, my own gifts, my own light, and to really shine, um, but from like never really having experienced that, never really having allowed this flow from the inside to the outside. And so there was this constant desire for that to really just come naturally. And at the same time, this impulse to, to try and, and sort of force it. And this, also this, this worry that I wouldn't allow myself to, that, that um, like, once this flow starts, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take the actions, the associated actions, and that I would actually a, a fear and a worry that I would always be in this passive state in, in my own process and learning and just taking things in and taking things in and integrating them, but not letting things out um, because I felt that so many things wanted to come out. And this space really, really activated my creativity and my creative flow and my inspiration. And I felt so inspired here um, that <laughs> I had so many ideas of things I wanted to organize, things I wanted to share, to do, to co-create. I had immense co-creation inspiration um, that I didn't know what to focus on and I wanted to do it all. And, um, and so it was almost like an explosion of creativity in a chaos of like creative, yeah, not, not even so much flow because... Um, it's like it, it didn't really have direction or focus. And, um, 
And so I came to realize, and this is one of the things that this house sort of showed me or my time in this house made me realize and, and really experience profoundly is that I was so focused on really on this creative flow and on really being in my feminine essence in my feminine energy and letting my feminine energy flow um, that I had from from having been more in a masculine energy as many of us are in this society and sort of suppressing my inner feminine my feelings my emotions my intuition without realizing it right unconsciously having been so long in that I came to sort of resent this in a sense my inner masculine um, this sort of strategy this action oriented goal oriented and I still sort of have this but I don't want to be in strategies I don't want to be goal oriented I don't want to be all action I want to be inspired action um, but I need also this masculine and this space is also so so feminine um, it's a huge round space um, quite open so that the, 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 the energy flows but at the same time it's quite dark um, at least when I initially came here it was quite dark it wasn't that sunny at that time either um, and it I mean the roof is sort of uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't have that much light coming in. And so it's it's sort of like a cave. I even have a, a pet bat um, or, you know, the, the, pet, the bat that belongs to this house because it was here before me, actually. Um, I named him Claudio. And he comes flying by every now and then in the evening. He, uh, if I don't put my fruit away, he'll eat my uh, papaya and banana. <laughs> Um, and he, you know, drops his droppings all over the place, including one night all over my bed. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so this is his cave, right? Um, as it is my house, it is his cave. And um, so it's, it's sort of like a womb space, this, this sort of dark, contained big round space very natural very organic um, it has sort of like all these trees inside the house um, and so yeah lots of feminine energy lots of creative energy um, and so it, it sort of represents that for me that I was so and I am so much in my feminine essence and this is also my desire at the moment but I'm realizing that I also need some direction, some focus um, to, you know, not have it be like this, this sort of chaos and this, this puddle of creativity, but to have it be a river that flows. But for the river to flow, it needs to have river bedding. You know, it, it needs to flow somewhere. And um, this has been a huge process as well, and, and which I've sort of sought in co-creating things. And only very few things came off the ground, actually, and, and were actually put into, were materialized. Um, but it was, I came to realize that it was all about the process. And these three months here were for me to experiment this house was my playground it was my experimentation and exploration ground and I got to try so many things I got to fail in so many things I had so much frustration about things that didn't work but I also had so many realizations about what is not mine or what I don't like or don't want and although I was sort of frustrated about that, I'm also realizing that through finding out what I don't want by trying and having the experience, not 
this is not it. I get closer to what I do want. It's like taking layers off of what's not me. And by taking those layers off, I shine through more and I become more clear on what is me, who I am. So I'm, I'm getting to know me and I'm becoming more of who I am by realizing who I'm not and, and letting that go. And so this has brought me so much farther on my process, which um, a dear friend <laughs> has coined the term Bob for my process, the becoming of Boana, um, which is so very true. Um, and one of the main realizations I've had in that process is my identification with my surroundings. And this is very common for highly sensitive people, especially for empaths. And I never, and I never wasn't really sure whether I am an empath. And then I came to realize that actually by interacting a lot with someone, my way of getting to know someone is almost becoming them. And so I know very well what it is like to become someone else. I've been an anthropologist and I was so good at becoming the other, you know, like really tuning into them and seeing their point of view and expressing their point of view but I never really knew how to be me. It's like I just knew how to be others, that I sort of made other people's values, and this was a huge thing in, in my long-term relationship, is I took over his values, his principles, his perspective, and I didn't really know what was mine anymore. And, you know, it's also a way of externalizing, um, externalizing power, externalizing. And so this is what I came to find in this house as well, was one of my experiences and my realizations is that I was really in this place, in this magical space. I was externalizing my own magic. And so this place really got me to connect again with my inner magic, with my fairy essence. <laughs> and multiple people actually came up to me and were like, do you realize that you're a fairy? <laughs> um, of course you realize because this house, you named it the fairy house, Casa Las Alas, but my essence came out even more and I was attributing that to the space and so these past few weeks I like haven't wanted to leave this house because it's such a magical space and all these worries came up like what if I never find such a space again what if I won't be able to be in my creative flow because I don't have this space and so I was attributing so much to this house what got activated within myself but it was, of course, me that activated it with the help of this beautiful, magical space. But it's activated within me, and it's not dependent on this space. And so I was externalizing my magic, my creativity, my creative flow, my inspiration, and attributing it to this house. And these last few weeks, especially this last week, was... Um, my process of internalizing this again and really um, realizing that all this is within me and I'm taking it with me wherever I go and um, hmm. yeah hmm. And I've become so much more clear on my vision, my mission, 
my purpose in this life and what I want to and what I am meant to bring to this world and that I am of course taking with me and over this next week that I will be in in the small cabana next door I will get to experience also what it is like to be with myself in a smaller space and to allow myself to still be in that creative flow and to get some clarity on the next steps on how I'm going to move forward in my process of becoming me, <laughs> the becoming of Boana, but also in my pilgrimage to find my home and in really living my soul's purpose, um, in bringing my gifts to the world to share what wants to be shared in really a natural way <laughs> as it comes and to see where and how that wants to unfold. <laughs> Stay tuned and thank you for being, for tuning in, for being on my journey with me in this way. <laughs>